After 69 years, chemists finally get a good look at Einsteinium. Now, Einsteinium is a radioactive metallic, metallic element on the periodic table in the actinide series, coming in at oct the atomic weight of 99. And it was first conceived in the combustion of hydrogen bomb in the South Pacific island of Eluja Lab in 1952. Now, Eluja Lab was an island part of the Enewetak Atoll of the Marshall Islands. It was destroyed by the world's first true hydrogen bomb test on the 1st of November 1952. A test which was codenamed Shot Mike or Operation Ivy. Prior to being destroyed, the island was described as just another small naked island in the atoll. Now, the heavy element Einsteinium is one of the shyer members of the periodic table. And here you're looking at it. Well, the electron shells and the, the mock-up, anyway, of what we think it actually looks like. Now, this element does not naturally occur and is so unstable that it's difficult to get enough of the actual material of Einsteinium, element number 99, to look at because it's decaying so rapidly. It's very difficult to study. Now, amazingly, the National Laboratory and Georgetown University have managed to do just that. They inspected a microscopic amount of Einsteinium-254, a little different, in order to better understand the elusive element's fundamental chemical properties and behavior. And their research has been published today in the Nature Journal Science. And here's the Californium-251, very close to what they were studying. Einsteinium is made at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory's high flux isotope reactor. As a byproduct of the biannual Californium 252 production, which is another heavy lab synthesized element, but one that actually has commercial utility. Technological advancements have meant that these radioactive elements can now be made in laboratory settings without the destructive pyrotechnics of the mid 20th century. The reactor at Oak Ridge, Tennessee is one of the extremely few suppliers of Californium-252. Now, the reason they can create these elements is because they have really high flux neutrons so that they can kind of push the shells here. These are the atomic shells. They can push further and further and further out of the nucleon shells. And that's according to Catherine Shields, a chemist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and co-author of this paper. And in a video call, the initial product of the reactor is just an absolute mess, a combination of all sorts of heavy elements, she said, explaining that it's not just about making the element or making the isotope, but purifying it so that they can actually do chemistry with it. Now, such heavy radioactive elements such as Einsteinium and Californium, as well as household names like uranium and plutonium, are all part of the actinide group or the actinide series. Now, these are elements 89 through 103, down here, the bottom line, from actinium up through Lorentium, and also include uranium and plutonium in there. Only some of them, like Einsteinium and Californium, are actually synthesized. Once a research team gets past the logistical work of safety protocols to ensure the radioactive elements, like any other lab material, are handled safely, the issues are primarily ensuring they have enough of the material to work with because all of these actinide series elements break down rapidly. Their half-life is quick and they're turning into other things minute by minute. So that's the difficulty. Now, once they have enough pure material extracted from the process of Californium production, Einsteinium can be contaminated by Californium. But there was a breakthrough. The research team was working with a mere 200 nanograms of Einsteinium an amount 300 times lighter than an actual grain of salt, according to Corey Carter, 
a chemist now at the University of Iowa and lead author of the study. A microgram is 1,000 nanograms. Was pre previously thought to be the lower limit for the sample size, but now they're working with just one-fifth of that. And if you want to know more, I will link you to the actinide series below. Now here's the paper, Chemists Create and Capture Einsteinium, the elusive 99th element. And scientists have uncovered some of its basic chemical properties for the first time. There were questions of, is the sample going to survive? That we could prepare for as best as we possibly could, because this is quickly decaying. This tiny little hundreds of times smaller than a grain of salt is decaying. Amazingly, it worked. The team managed to measure the bond distance of Einsteinium-254 using X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Say that five times fast, in which you bombard the sample with X-rays. The researchers looked at what happened to light that was absorbed by the sample and found that the light that was absorbed subsequently emitted and was blue shifted, meaning the wavelengths were slightly shortened. Now, this was a surprise because they had expected a redshift, longer wavelengths, and this suggests Einsteinium's electrons may couple differently than other elements near it on the periodic table in the actinide series. Unfortunately, the team was unable to get X-ray diffraction data due to Californium contamination in their sample, which would muddy the results from the method. Now, previously, researchers assumed they could extrapolate certain trends seen in lighter elements to the heavier actinide elements, such as how they absorb light and how the size of the atoms and ions of other elements called lanthanides decrease as their atomic numbers go up. But their new results suggest that extrapolation might not hold true. There's been a lot of great work over the last 20 years moving progressively further into the actinide series, showing that actinide chemistry has more going on, Carter said. The rules that we've kind of developed for smaller things, maybe they don't work quite as well. Now, what does that mean to you? It means that we don't know anything. And the more we research, the more we know. Radio analytical work has been done on Einsteinium shortly after the discovery in the 1950s. But at this time, little was studied about actinides in general beyond their radioactive properties. This recent research shows that Einsteinium's bonds, distances, the average length and connection between the nuclei of atoms in the molecule were shorter than expected. The results, Carter said, is a meaningful first data point. Now, are they doing this for actual science or is there more nefarious things associated with Einsteinium in this paper? Now, we know that all of this research stems from hydrogen bomb explosions in the equator, but does it have more nefarious reaches like element 115, which is just beyond the actinide series and claimed to be impossible to create? But recently, a year ago, atomic numbers 113, 115, 117, and 118, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry announced the addition of these elements including the elusive element 115. What I know is what I told you. The rest is conjecture and conspiracy science. I hope you got something out of the video. We are doing actual science in some cases. Very little of this is shared with the populace because they have no digestive system for it and no means to extrapolate what it actually means. We give you tidbits and hints to steer you in the right direction. All the links are below, and that's what you need to know. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When we provide the links to do your own research, get, get growing and be safe. We love you. Click on one of the other boxes illuminating for more knowledge and be safe.